In this video, we will continue our look at Cloudberry Explorer. In the last video, we covered the installation and a tour of the software functions. In this episode, we're going to show you the setup procedures to get your Cloudberry Explorer to work with your Amazon S3 account. Okay, now we're back here at the Cloudberry Explorer interface, and what we want to do now is head on back over to File, where I showed you earlier where you set up your Amazon S3 accounts. Click on that, and you just click on this to establish a new account. In other words, you've already got your Amazon S3 info. You've got your account set up at AWS. We'll head there in just a second. But once you got all your details there, and if you don't, well, you can always click this link here. But once you got all that stuff there, we covered this in a prior video. Then we just want to transfer a few goodies from there to here to establish your new uh, account here. That's what they're talking about, new account. Let's go ahead and delete this account. We just select that, click on delete. It asks you, are you sure? Yes, thank you very much then click on add these are the items we're going to need here now the name there's nothing anywhere that says you got to have this this or this you name it whatever you want to distinguish this one account on your cloudberry explorer from other accounts on your cloudberry explorer so in this case we're going to name it uh, since i already forgot what that other one was just a second ago garden me <laughs> peppers okay yeah whatever the heck it was now it's gardening peppers now we need the access key and the secret key and we're just going to check that box click on ok bing bang boom we're done now then the access key and the secret key we're going to get that from our amazon s3 account that we set up in a prior video so let us head on over to amazon s3 and that is aws.amazon.com forward slash s3 boom you're here now then uh, and by the way, here are a few other the tools. We kind of covered this briefly in a prior video. Some of the other tools, we're going to cover these in greater detail in upcoming video series just to let you know. So be aware of it. Over here, we want to click on your account. Actually, just hover over this, and it gives you a drop-down selection. We need the access identifiers. Now, once you click on this, if you are not logged in, then it's going to ask you to go ahead and log in with your credentials, being your email address, your username, and the password. So click on this. I've already logged in, so it should not ask me for that. Correct. It brings me right to the access identifiers page. Now, depending upon the setup right now, our setup is going to be for S3. It would depend on which one of these access identifiers you would be in need of. We only need this top one here for the S3. Some of those other tools I just referenced over here in the left column on the prior screen would also require this one here. That's beyond the scope of this video, so don't worry about it until we cross that bridge. Right now, this is the one that we want. And once you get here, these are the two items that we're looking for, your access key ID and your secret access key. For analogy's sake, look at it as if this is your username and this is your password. And in most cases, you do not want to give your username and password to just any old Joe or Jane. So don't go posting these on your Twitter account, okay? <laughs> if for some odd reason your account, your S3 account, get somewhat unsecure because uh, somebody else was using your computer and got into it out of curiosity you know whatever the case was you have the ability to nix that uh, to change that by clicking on this generate button right here what this does is it generates a new secret access key which basically makes everything else you had set up prior to that moment using your original secret access key null and void none of those would work anymore until you re-enter your new secret access key that was brought about by clicking on the generate button here. So unless you screw something up, leave this button alone. That being said, at least ways now you know how to fix a problem in case you feel your account has been compromised for whatever reason. Anyway, what you want to do now is you want to click on this to show your secret access key, highlight that, copy it to a text document just for transfer purposes, and it's always a good idea to get in the habit of clicking on this of course to show it once you've copied it click on it again it'll say hide just click on the hide icon and then that will show it as it is now hidden and what you want to do too again I this is kind of obvious but I want to mention it anyway whenever you're highlighting this to copy this to your text document to transfer it to your new Cloudberry Explorer account you want to make sure that you are not highlighting anything other than just the numbers and 
letters here. In other words, no blank spaces on either side, you know, no up and down. Just make sure that you have just this ID here and nothing else. Otherwise, your stuff may not work. And if your stuff does not work, well, this is probably the reason why. Just come on back here and recopy it. So now that I've got this copied onto my text document, let's head on back over to our Cloudberry Explorer. we got the name here. Just enter the access key, the secret key, click on this, and click on OK, and we should be good to go. Let us do that now. Copy, paste. Copy paste, check that button, click on OK, bing bang boom, all is right with the world. Now then, click on close. As you can see, once we deleted that, it went directly to our My Computer. So, let's see if we can get that open again here. All is right with the world. There we go. Now, that was rather strange, frankly. As you can see, the name is different, but the bucket that I had on there was still the same because the information that I created on that one account regardless of what name it is in other words if I have another third-party tool and we'll cover this in an upcoming video as well if I have another third-party tool it can be named whatever I want on that particular tool but the information within that account will remain static will remain the same to be accessed by whatever tool you have this is a good representation of that because you saw me delete that, didn't you? You were paying attention, weren't you? I deleted that from Cloudberry Explorer. It was no longer in existence here, but this one bucket folder directory, whatever you want to call it, it's called a bucket, by the way, is still in existence on that account on S3. So simply by deleting it here does not affect what takes place on the actual S3 account. Just let that be known. Anyway, that's going to bring us to the end of this video on how to set up your S3 account with your Cloudberry Explorer. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.